Hi everyone, Darren from ILM with a quick overview of Draytech's current range of Gigabit Vigor switches. There's currently three new models to choose from, but there's still some stock available for older models, so keep an eye out and you might just snag a bargain. I'll include a link below to the whole range currently available. One of the major advantages in Draytech switches is they all have a GUI, that's a graphic user interface, which offers extra levels of configuration. Now a lot of people are never going to use a lot of this stuff and the switch will work just fine without touching any of it, but one day it might come in very handy so it's good to have it there. One of those options is QoS, that's quality of service, which allows the switch to give priority to certain types of traffic over others. That's going to become very welcome in situations like trying to stream video on your smart TV from a network storage device just as one of your kids decides to transfer gigabits of files to their tablet, or maybe when you're using voice over IP to have a telephone conversation at the office and it keeps breaking up because other work colleagues are hammering a central database or a file server. All Draytech switches also have VLANs, that's Virtual Local Area Networks. This allows you to segregate your network and prevent access by certain people or devices in one part of the network from getting to people or devices in other parts. You can also use this to manage network traffic as well if you have a particularly busy network. Another feature in all models is called 802.3AZ Energy Efficient Ethernet. This detects idle devices and cable length automatically and adjusts the amount of power required so you're never chewing more power than necessary. A quick note on Draytech switch product names, the first letter indicates the type of switch. We have a G for gigabit, P for PoE, F for fiber and X for 10 gig. The next number after that tells us the type of management it has. One is for WebSmart, two is layer two and three is layer three. The next two numbers are the number of ports, excluding any console ports, and the last digit is the version number. Starting off with the little G1080, it has 8 gigabit ethernet ports and web smart management which provides automatic management of network traffic for maximum performance. And it also offers up to 6 VLANs to segregate network traffic for extra security or traffic management. It supports up to 4 queues of QoS to give important network traffic like VoIP or video priority. It's a desktop switch so not designed to be rack manable and comes with a 5 volt 1 amp power pack. Let's power it up and check it out. Link light, and it's orange because my little adapter in the laptop here is just a 10100 one. If we had your gigabit connection, we'd see a green light over here. To get to the GUI, you might have to configure your PC with a static IP address in the 192.168.1. something range, and then it'll come up on 192.168.1.224. Okay, so here's our system information page. This is our model name, device name, our firmware version, build date, system uptime, uh, the device's MAC address, and the IPv4 address. This switch only supports IPv4. We don't have IPv6 support. And then we have a bunch of information in the menu over here. We have some port statistics. We have some uh, link aggregation ability here. We have our VLANs. A MAC address table, this will show us all the connected devices. Uh, multicast capability, here's our QoS settings which we can change to 802.1p COS or port based. Rate limiting, some storm control, loop prevention, some port mirroring and our system maintenance page where we can uh, have a DHCP server in the switch, we can enable or disable there. We can change the system password and we can upgrade the uh, firmware or back up the configuration here and down here we have reset or just reboot next up the Vigor switch g1280 has 24 gigabit ports and we also have four combo ports that's an additional four gigabit ports or four sfp slots sfp stands for small form factor pluggable meaning you can plug up to four fiber modules in to connect this switch to other network segments with optic fiber just bear in mind it's either one or the other. If you load the slots up with modules, these four additional gigabit ports won't work. This is a 19 inch rack mount design and it comes with the mounting hardware you'll need, but there's no need to mount it on a rack if you don't want one. It'll still work fine just sitting on a desk or a shelf and it's a fanless design so it's nice and quiet too. Let's plug it in and take a peek at the GUI. Powering up. Ooh. 
Righto, we have Web Smart Management again, so it automatically manages the network traffic for you. A little bit like the G1080, but we have a lot more options. Down the bottom here, we don't just have IPv4, we have IPv6 settings as well, and there's our IPv6 addressing. The status shows our port bandwidth utilization, LLDP statistics, switch LAN, we've got general setup, where we can set up our IP addressing and IPv6 addressing. Our port settings, mirroring, link aggregation, here we've got a lot more settings, lag settings, lag management, lag port settings, our VLAN management, there we can create a VLAN, our interface settings, voice VLAN, Mac VLAN, surveillance VLAN, uh, our triple E, that's our energy efficient ethernet setup, multicast, properties, IGMP, snooping, jumbo frames, STP, MAC address table, whoops, where'd that go, static MAC settings, dynamic address settings, and our dynamic learned block port recover, and our security settings. So here we've got storm control, uh, DOS protection, and IP source guard, our ACL, QoS settings, general properties, port settings, Q settings, QoS maps, DSCP mapping and IP precedence mapping, bandwidth, ingress rate, egress shaping rate, egress shaping per queue. Uh, under system maintenance here, we've got our TR069 support, which is our Viga ACS2 control settings to enable this switch to be managed and monitored remotely. Our LLDP settings. SNMP, Access Manager, our Time and Date, Backup Manager, here we can set it to back up the configuration, Upgrade Manager to upgrade the firmware, Account Manager, so we can set up other users to be able to log into the switch. Uh, we can reset it to factory defaults here, or we can just reboot it. And at the very end, we have some diagnostic tools like a ping test and Syslog Explorer. I'll also include links below to test drives of the configuration menus so you can have a go at this yourself. Okay, and finally the Vigus Switch G2280. It's much the same as the G1280 but over here we have a console port which allows file export and import using a serial port and a serial cable is included. Let's fire it up and take a look. Again, we've got a fanless design, so it's nice and quiet. Okay, so the interface is very much like the G1280. Down here, we have our IPv4 and IPv6 addressing, the same as before, but now we step up to layer two management, and in our security settings is where that gets particularly interesting. We have radius and TAC, ACS, management access authentication, management access control, 802.1x Mac authentication and its various settings, port security, we can have protected ports, storm control and DOS, dynamic ARP inspection, DHCP snooping, IP source guard, and the rest is very much the same. Under system maintenance, we've got our TR069 settings to enable it to work with the Vigor ACS remote management system. And the usual diagnostic test as well. Okay, so that is Draytex Gigabit Vigor Switch range. They come with a two year back to base warranty and are available now from Draytech resellers. For more information about all Draytech products, please check out our website at www.draytech.com.au. If you have any questions, please comment below, or you can send us an email to sales at draytech.com.au, or give us a call on 02983888899. Once again, I'll include links below to the full specs as well as test drives of the GUIs. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like below, and don't forget to subscribe. Give the bell a click too if you'd like a notification of new videos as they go up. Thanks and bye for now.